Okay, what we're working on today is a uh, update to the, depending on how you say it, GIF Citizen or GIF Citizen. It doesn't matter because what we're doing today is uh, just a simple update to the menu. We're on version 4 here, so we'll load this. And what I'm using here, for those not familiar, is an editor called the Valkyrie, Valkyrie Editor. And what this allows is 3D artist types to create applications for a browser, uh, standalone executables that don't require installation, um, Android, Mac, uh, iPhone, those type of things. It lets you create all of those type of um, packages for your audience. All right, so I go over here to the levels, and I'm on uh, Give Citizen 4. In the background here, you see I have my uh, menu as it is, and um, I've set the resolution up uh, 16.9 type ratio. This center dot here it tracks the mouse cursor, and this just gives me visual um, where that mouse cursor is and what it's going to collide with in the scene. Now, this scene is set up a little bit differently than you would do a 2D scene, uh, 2D UI. Uh, with a 2D UI, the mouse cursor projects straight down into the, the scene with the with a 3D type of UI, you have to take into account the perspective. Actually, let's save as a new version. We'll save as five, so we can continue on. To test this out accurately, we need to create a build. To do that, we just go to our export tab, and we can go to the player and export. So do you want to save it first? Um, I just click it. Builds are really quick. Here, packed everything, 3.2 seconds. Close it, and we can just uh, play our preview. And we can see it's it's tracking the the mouse. You can see it's slightly offset, but it gives you a good idea of, of where the mouse is. And the reason I have to do this is because I made this menu in 3D to kind of mimic what Star Citizen is doing. All right, so now that we see that's working, our goal here today is to change out these buttons. Um, these are just a plane. If we go into our 3D view here, these are just planes. And I've uh, applied a texture to it here. What if we go to the library and go to our backgrounds where we have menu buttons and it is button cutout 01 ping okay so this is it here you can see you can see there that um, the alpha channel has that little chamfer on it so looking at the actual images you see we've, we've got it here uh, but I noticed there's a bit of rounding on the edges there's also this um, glowing outline. So what I've done is I've gone into 3D Max and I've basically created that same thing um, as a model. Gave it outline. I made a big one and a small one and hopefully this allows me to kind of squish it and without too much um, scaling distortion in the game. The rest will be done with the text uh, entity. Okay, and, and just a little bit of background, no pun intended, on this background. So the GIF Citizen, or GIF Citizen, um, it came out of some, some excellent work by another member in the Star Citizen forums. And he did pixel art of all the ships. So inspired by that, I decided, hey, what if I take this pixel art and I just kind of make a simple game out of it? And I did, I got the ships uh, fighting each other. Possibly it could be this one. Possibly uh, version 3. Heck no. Let's continue. One more try. There we go. He did these excellent pixel uh, art ships. If we play here, um, you can see. So I got my ship. You can fly around and shoot. And I apparently didn't save the version that takes damage. 
And the green here, you see um, it's shooting to the front cannon and the, and the rear and the, and the wing cannons. And the front are fixed and the rear are gimbaled. So they track wherever you aim. And when the cursor passes behind, it automatically rotates so you can fly around. And, and down here is um, the HUD from the, or actually the cockpit from the Saber. And uh, I've put in some temporary stuff here for the armor. Actually, let's go full screen. The armor and shields, uh, missiles, countermeasures, and torpedoes, and all that stuff. Of course, the Saber doesn't have torpedoes and target. Now, will I be able to integrate all this? I do not know. Um, this is just a hobby, after all. Let's go back to our actual menu. So, that was the first start. Uh, the first part. And then once I once I was kind of happy with that, it was kind of like a dead end. I, I wanted to do a little bit more, so then it led to this um, menu creation. So the idea here is that we get into a little bit more detail. Um, so we've got our main menu. With our background, this will be animated later on. So these lights will flicker, you'll see some steam, and uh, should be all pretty. So I've gotten rid of, I cleaned up everything, got rid of the Star Citizen logo. That will be replaced by the GIF Citizen logo here. Um, I'm going to clean this up. Uh, it's kind of just a quick test. Try to get the you know, pattern look to it. Uh, that logo will be up here, just like in the original. Uh, button layouts are a bit different. Let's move on to adding in some buttons. So let's see, where did I put them? All right. So here we are. I have my main menu. Okay, so this is scene, and basically I just need to drill down, and I can I can actually do this and find where it is. Now that I know where it is, um, this I can rotate this parent, or I'll reset its rotation so that it's all even. All right, now let's see if this works. What I'm going to do is I'm going to bring it in here. I'm going to scale it. under the transform tools. Move it over here. This will give us roughly uh, the correct scale. I'm not trying to match it perfectly, but uh, close enough is fine. All right, let's see what that looks like over here. So if we look at this from a turned perspective as it would be in the menu there. And just like, that's kind of what we're looking at. You kind of see a little bit of the edge here. Let me go full screen. Kind of see a bit of the edge. Um, we see our border. We should be able to add a glow to this um, post-process effect. Uh, the center is a separate mesh. It will allow us to easily apply a background, uh, animate it uh, via a movie file or uh, an animated GIF or something. So that looks pretty decent. What I need to do is I need to copy whatever this, what did I call it? Um, this is called primitive. I just need to make sure that all this stuff interacts and it should interact correctly up here. For those of you that use this editor, you know that you can set collision classes and uh, here's your response table down here. And the name of this type of entity is a character for the, the class, collision class. Well, it will be an easy fix if we need to fix it. Just add it to the table. So I'm going to copy this into. I'm going to copy and click this box here. It'll give you the VEC3 um, numbers. And then you can paste it directly into 
there, the model. Uh, it's lined up there. And now the final thing that I want to do is I want to copy this name because I already had everything linked up and I decided to change it to a, a regular model in the end. So we are going, and this was a standard primitive plane. Um, now we're actually using a 3D model exported from Max. So we can delete this guy and we can just rename this here. Copy, paste, copy, paste. And that's it. So let's um, save that. And if we play it, all right, we got no response. All right. So what we want to do is we want to add. Uh, let's see. All right. There's our collision boxes, and it's showing up. So that's fine. If we change this to primitive. works. So to get this working, we need to change this primitive from character to something else like uh, primitive. Alternatively, we can come over here to the um, layer and come down into the response table and we see mouse tracker. Now the name of this uh, red box here, the collision class is mouse tracker. So we need to add and I just add character here. And uh, we'll just change this bit. I changed it. So now it should work as expected. And that's what happens when you don't touch a project for several weeks and you come back to it and you didn't leave a note of what you left off or what you did. Generally, I have very well documented notes. These little files on the side allow you to document everything. And these early phases of development happen so quick, like I've only spent an hour, maybe a couple hours total so far on the whole thing uh, for the coding side, longer for the graphics. But, I mean, that's nothing. All right, so now that that is working, I want to go ahead and do the rest for the other buttons. Uh, I believe we have a button zero here. Move you to the top. Okay. So we'll just do this for now. You. Okay, those are our buttons. I'm just going to clear out these buttons um, with their actions so that don't accidentally leave something in there. So for button zero, we we'll copy, just drag and drop it. Uh, make sure that we drag in the correct one. That's correct. We're going to copy uh, button zero's position. And we're going to copy button zero's name. They'll drive me crazy. All right, cool. So now we have these. Let's try it out again. It should all work. Yeah, yeah they'll work. Let's uh, do these little buttons here. So the little buttons are any button number two. They are a bit smaller. And I did that two different sizes so that when I do scale them, this bezel or outline will not be too narrow. They'll be roughly the same scale. So, uh, just uh, start on this. Here. Alright, I need 
we'll see how that looks up close. Alright, that looks about the same for the bezel. Well, I'm kind of okay with that. Make another one here. Once again, we are just copying the position. That's it. Now, one thing I did not do is I did not set these uh, new entities, these new characters, to relative. When you set the entity to relative, it means if you move the parent, then all the children underneath it will follow it. If you don't, then they all stay where they are in space. Um, and this could cause you a lot of headache. So, for instance, I have this main container here. If I turn it on, you can see everything inside. And that's what I want to move around. And of course, if I, actually, I can show you here because I want this aligned to the left, like that. See, nothing's happening. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and uh, undo that because I have all of these actually uh, are following it. So I'm just change this to relative. There used to be an option to select everything at once and change the settings, but that has long been gone. Kind of miss it, but it's not too painful right now. So now if we move this parent group, you can see we, we have control over it, all the children. All right, now that that's done, we are actually going to add some text here. So we go over to our here, the base entities. We'll find our text entity. We're just going to drag this into this button. And what I'll do is I will copy, copy him, paste it here. That will center it up for me. And then I will, I will make sure this is relative, so that it matches with the button as it moves. And the one problem with doing 3D interfaces like this is you have this Z fighting, which is kind of annoying. You can move up your text a bit. You don't want it to be too far in front because then there you got that parallax, which um, could be good, could be bad. In this case, I don't think I really want that because it'll it'd be a cool effect if you want to spend time, but I don't have time. So, um, I like to name everything, so this will be uh, zero text. I'm going to go over here to the filters and just put point, uh, because we are, we don't want it filtered. because my background is pixelated. Actually, let me turn on the console. I had it here, I don't know why it's gone. Save, save often. So this first button here, I think I'm gonna call it Hanger. Uh, we can change the font size. Okay, so let's look at the screenshot for reference. Um, here's a screenshot of the menu again. Alright, so it's in a bluish color, and it's not that big. It's a little bit offset. All caps. And a nice clean font. Um, I'll have to change out the font later. Actually, that one's not too bad. Uh, I adjust the spacing on it. Color is uh, kind of bluish, right? lighter than that. A little bit bluer. Uh, 
All right, I think that'll be okay. There is a subtext underneath it. Um, this might get tricky. Let me see, it's uh, normal. What are we gonna write there? I have no idea. Let's try uh, changing the font size too. Okay, we're good there. I can't type full screen like that. Um, and let's change from center to left and left to anchor it up. And that's not spelt right. I'm gonna have to change it. See your fine ships, that's fine for now. Um, okay, I'll position this. Something on the edge there. background image will have the rest of the cool shiny stuff in it. The division bar, there's a gradient here, uh, background. Um, they probably all do this in uh, in their editor, I guess. Uh, it's not all a texture. And then I don't know if they do like a render target or, or what. But I'm doing it all in 3D with entities, and I can I can get that same depth and everything. But then again, yeah, I, like I said, I got that parallax issue I need to to deal with, and uh, I don't want to deal with that stuff right now. Gosh, this is annoying with that button offset. Um, make sure that's all relative. Relative, relative. Okay. What I'll do is I'll just copy this. Um, here. Maybe it's a depth. Depth is different. Yeah. Uh, that was light. The depth is different. Yeah. Yeah, it's a little better. Okay, so that's the hanger. Alright, so what's next? Um, well, so we got well, button one out of the way, which is our hangers button, I mean button zero. Button one, um, you got automatically renamed entities, that way you can uh, call them out directly and link to them directly without calling the wrong things. I like to clean everything up as much as possible, so later someone could follow this out. Um, oh. But in uh, text, let's say the sub. I've got that issue up here too. I've got to uh, sub it. So I know which one's which. Yep. This button will be. Calling all citizens, your skills are needed. All right, that's fine for now. Uh, we can do this for the rest of the buttons. Hmm. 
Hmm. I might make, make another button too. So let me see. I need quit. Maybe an options. Maybe a loot. Not sure if I need both. What kind of options would you have? Turning on audio. Possibly control settings. Resolution maybe. Turning on smoothing. Hmm. I think that we will. We'll see what happens. Data tables are how I'm driving all this. Main menu, DT main menu. So, if button equals, the button property equals button six, we want it to do. all these threes to six and when you name all of your entities correctly it's much easier otherwise you have the hashtag or pound and then uh some some alphanumeric um serial at the end and unless you know that you, you can't just change it as easily all right so what we want to do is we want to copy this guy also like say so this will be a not if not six then what do we do uh, we go to the start position the home position of the button all right that's it so that sets this new button um, it's so basically what's going on here is when the mouse cursor collides with the button the button responds so it sends the button will sense the collide it'll send a message to the data table to button saying hey i collided with the mouse cursor and it'll send the, the message um button for btn4 and i'll put there in the uh, value of the property right here when this prop when this value updates for this property it triggers for instance if it was button four it'll trigger this event and it'll play this action which is animate move two so and i named it uh it to main menu button for end so that's its end uh, position of the animation and if you click on the action, you can see exactly where it's going. Easy enough. Now, for this new button we've created, we also need to create the start and ends. And I've put that inside this main dummy object. It's kind of like a group or container. And it'll be under here. And we have the starts and the ends. So um, five start and fives end. And uh, basically what we'll do is just put it here. That's close enough. I'm going to be playing around with it and it will um, it'll sync itself up and I'll save it and it'll be fine. So I just rename all these to six, the two. And the rest of it's done. So I didn't have to write any code there. I just had to put in the names. So technically, if all has gone well, we can hit start and we can go over all this stuff and we can see all of them working. If we turn on this uh, collision box mode, uh, okay, it's because other things don't have collision. Well, easy enough. All right, cool. So 
So, mouse tracker is uh, zeroed out. That puts it back at zero. Is. All right. Now that those have been um, set up, going back to our main um, parent object here, we're just going to rotate it. I'm just going to come over here so I can get a better view. Don't want to rotate it too much. That's too much. That's okay. It's about the same. Build another preview here. And I'm actually working off a thumb drive over a USB thumb drive. So the times are a bit different, but even even now it saved it and then it took 1.5 seconds to build. That's not bad at all. Uh, I gotta fix the rest of the text entities. But that's it. I mean, go full screen here. And of course, um, this red box here will be uh, invisible at the end. Alright, so that's our work so far. Mm, I know why it's got this fringe. It is because my background a very very uh, background of the the scene the root here is this uh, magenta if I change that I bet that goes away it does but I need it magenta for right now so it's basically it's just uh, it's just the way that the transparencies are working. It's seeing through um, to the background. Uh, for now, I have it this magenta color so I can see uh, which which menus I generally use black for the background for my my scenes. This helps me. You see the magenta bleed through here. That's fine. That that won't be obvious in the in the final effect. Um, I'm going to copy this just so I can find it when I'm done. Export. Alright, see, it's, it's gone. In fact, uh, mouse tracker, we just, uh, we're not going to draw it. You can see that because we don't see where that is, we have slight alignment issues. And that can be changed by adjusting field of view, and I just don't want to mess around with that just yet. I want to get the framework um, set up, and then we'll, we'll move on from there. In the Star Citizen, when you hover over one of these buttons, I think that it plays the animation only when you hover over it. Not sure. So the next episode, we are going to actually send these buttons to um, their destination. So hangar, missions, gift marine, gift commander, load, and we will create a quit so that um, everything, uh, everything's good to go. In fact, we might be able to get rid of this quit button for a while, because we can just X out of the app. Okay, one final thing we're going to do is we are going to update the background image with Gift Citizen, just so it's all branded right.
All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna update with this image. So we have this GIF logo in the background and first we need to just resize it. Image, make sure constraints are off. Make this power of two, 256. I need to reload this. And now that is it for now.